everyone, I'm Selena, an alumna of HKUST Class of 2020 from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. Today, I'm really excited to come back home and take you all on the tour of the 10 best engineering spots in HKUST. Let's go! Can you see this? Come, have a look. Wow, is that really a race car in HKUST? This is the Dream Team Open Lab, which is open to university student teams like the robotics team and the electric vehicle racing group. Here they can test out and try out their ideas to be used in local and overseas competitions. Every time you come back, there's always seems to be something new. So let's go have a look inside. Come on, follow me. Do oh, it. Oh, oh. This electric race car looks amazing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So, have you guys managed to achieve your dream here together? Yes. Yeah. For this car, we actually start from scratch. Mm. Like, and we joined a competition from China yeah. two years ago with all these amazing people. We are really open-minded and um, have a diverse background, as you can see. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, we achieved the dreams together. Well, that sounds fantastic. So, what do you guys have planned next for this car? So, basically, we're actually building a completely new car and the critical design is almost done yet now and the parts are sent for manufacturing at the moment. And then we will join a competition called Formula Student UK uh, in, in July, which will held in the Grand Prix Silverstone circuit. Yeah. Wow, that sounds so cool and I'm so jealous you're going to Silverstone. Well, I wish you guys all the best for the upcoming competition. Thank you, thank so you. Keep fighting! Fighting, yes! <laughs> Well, this is our engineering commons. Here you can find out the latest in the School of Engineering from all of these projections. Let me show you where all the engineering students hang out. Come on, let's go. Wow, it is great to be back. This is also known as the base for all engineering students throughout our busy days. It's a little quiet in here because it's pretty early in the morning, but my friends and I used to chill and study here for hours, usually at that back table over there. But whilst I'm here, I'm gonna be meeting a very special guest. Hi, Selena. Hey, Tim. Welcome back. How have you been? Oh, well, I've been very good, thanks. And actually, it's great to be back. Do you want to have a seat? Of course. Yeah, let's go. What's new in the School of Engineering? Could you tell me a little bit more about it? Sure. Um, there have been a lot of new development, but I want to start by saying that during this very challenging pandemic time, School of Engineering has continued to proactively advance our engineering activity and functions. Mm -hmm. By now, I think all our teaching staff and faculty have already mastered their interactive online teaching, including lab courses. Mm -hmm. So we have tried our best to provide our students a very viable and a normal learning environment. I'd like to mention a few very exciting activities. First is uh, we continue to drive our experiential learning yeah. uh, initiative. So particularly year one students now coming from different disciplines will be able to work together yeah. to develop a system working artifact by a multidisciplinary way. So this learning by doing experience really excites our students. Mm. I feel also train them with uh, the problem-solving skill, teamwork spirit. And the second thing is our continuing effort on entrepreneurship education to our students. For example, we established a fireside chess series yeah. on entrepreneurship. And uh, this series features seasoned uh, tech entrepreneurs or investors who have the passion, experience or ideas which will be very helpful to train our next generation technology leaders. The third thing is our close interaction with industry. Mm -hmm. and the School of Engineering has been on the forefront on knowledge transfer. And one of the major effort is working closer with industry so that students can get exposure involvement with industry when they're studying at HKUST. So last thing, I just want to mention the Sustainable Smart Campus Initiative. Mm -hmm. This is an initiative for using HKUST campus as a living lab. So now, when you later you tour the campus, you will find in different corner of HKUST really has a presence of our own technology to have real impact to make the campus more sustainable. So School of Engineering play a very important role in this. Well, it's so great to hear about all these new and exciting developments. So I wanted to ask, are there any new programs that you're offering? Yes, we have uh, multiple new programs for undergraduate, even for alumni. First is our integrated system and the design undergraduate major. 
This is a program which follow a brand new pedagogy. It's project-based learning, training the next generation innovators, combining system thinking with design thinking. Mm -hmm. They're able to learn the specific discipline and working in a very team-oriented setup. Another very exciting we started is called engineering plus AI mm -hmm. major for undergraduate study. The idea is Regardless what is your engineering major you're going to take, we're going to offer an expanded major program for AI training. There would be enormous opportunity in the future to enhance your career. Oh, yeah. So this is a new program that our incoming undergraduate students will be able to choose from. We also have a new program for our taught PG program, mm -hmm. which is the new FinTech program. And what's new is it's a joint program with business school and the School of Science. It's oversubscribed, huge number of applicants. I think it's meet the market need. And the, finally, the fourth one I want to mention is a new uh, organization established under School of Engineering called Academy of Continuing Education. It is to offer educational program which are not degree pursuing, ranging from all interesting new topics, targeting alumni, industries need, you know, Knowledge transfer is very important for a research university like mm -hmm. HKUST, and there are so much technology and engineering knowledge. This is new initiatives, and hope that through this we will be able to make greater societal impact. Well, it's so wonderful to hear that HKUST Engineering offers so many new learning opportunities for both student and alumni. Well, as being a young alumni myself, I'm going to do my best to become one of the greatest ambassadors and make a positive impact on my alma mater and society. I'm sure you will, Selena. Oh, oh no, time is hurrying along. I should make a start on this tour for the alumni, but thank you so much, Tim, and I'll see you later. Bye for now, Selena. Bye. Bye. <laughs> everyone, have you seen this? This is the new Shaw Auditorium that's going to be open by the end of this year to hold large-scale events. How wonderful it would be if I could have a graduation ceremony here. Although this isn't finished just yet, why don't we go inside and check out the newly redeveloped wind tunnel. Come on, let's go. So this is the aerodynamics and acoustics facility. There seems to be so many different sports in here. It seems like a really fun place to be. Hey you! Wouldn't you agree? Hello? Why is he talking to me? Hi, Selena. Oh, hi, Pang. Yeah, so here you see it's not just for fun. These are for serious elite sports. The facility is the largest low noise wind tunnel in the whole Southeast Asia. No way. Yeah, here you can explore unlimited possibilities. How about let me show you inside the tunnel? Yeah, sure, that sounds exciting. Hey, wait, Pang, wait, I can't get off, wait. Whoa, she's going so fast. Yes. Seems like you guys do some really amazing work in here. Yes, we are using uh, technologies in Formula One, racing cars and aerospace engineering to improve the cyclist's aerodynamic performance. And we are working closely with Hong Kong Sports Institute on this. So why is this facility cooperating with Hong Kong Sports Institute to conduct research for the upcoming Olympic Games? Yeah, you know, in Olympic cycling, the competition is really fierce. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the first one and the second one are only milliseconds away. And because they are riding so fast, the majority of the drag is aerodynamic drag. We want to improve every aspect of the aerodynamic performance. So how does your research help to achieve marginal gains in performance? So our major goal is to reduce the aerodynamic drag of the cyclist. So that depends on the cyclist's posture, the clothes and the helmet they wear, and also the bike they ride. So, and we are doing uh, improvement in all these uh, aspects. So that seems like a lot of areas to look at. So what tools are you using to make all of these improvements? So basically, we have three tools to do the investigation. Let me show you. Oh, sure. So first one is wind tunnel experiment. Mm -hmm. We create a steady wind inside the test section and measure the minute difference in aerodynamic drag. Wow. And the second method is computational fluid dynamic simulation. We first scan the assay to get a numerical model of the assay. Oh, yeah. And we put the numerical model inside the virtual wind tunnel. At the end, we can get a much more detailed flow field inside the tunnel. And lastly, all the technologies have to be tested in the field test. Wow, aerodynamics is such a fascinating field. Yes. Actually, do you think I could go inside the tunnel? Sure, but let me ask Celia to stop her test first. Thank you. Yes. Ready? OK. 
where it's really happening now. <laughs> How was it? Oh, it was great. It was really windy inside, but surprisingly very quiet. Right. So for these kind of testing, we can go to wind speed up to 70 kilometers an hour. So it should be really noisy. But in this wind tunnel, we have a special sound absorbing treatment. So it makes the environment very suitable for human and sport testing. That's amazing. So here you're investigating a single cyclist, but in a real competition, there are many different cyclists. So how do you strategize for something like this accordingly? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in a cycling race, you don't want to stay in the front all the time. By staying behind another cyclist, you can save up to 40% energy. Wow. So at the end of the race, you can have more energy to overtake. So I heard that this wind tunnel could be used for land, sea, and sky research. So what do you guys have planned for this in the future? Yeah, so we will start two projects soon. One is for wind surfing, and the other is for racing car for 24 hours of Le Mans. That sounds really exciting. Well, I'm keen to see how this progresses. Absolutely. You can come back to us anytime. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm back to one of my most familiar places in HKUST, the Civil and Environmental Engineering Structures Lab. Come on, let's take a look. You see these concrete molds on the ground? Yes, students use these to create concrete of different mixed compositions and forms of reinforcement for research. <gasps> yeah, I still got it. <coughs> Wait, there's something interesting over there. I'm going to have a look. So I just found this on the ground. It is some bamboo and it's got some holes in it. I'm gonna give you some time to guess what you think this might be. Any guesses? Well, you might have thought it was a flute maybe. Actually, it's not a flute. Now let's go find the professor and maybe he can tell us a little bit more about what this is. Come on, let's go. Hi, Elias. It's great Hello. to see you. Good to see you too. So, although I know that this is just bamboo, but could you tell the audience what you can use this for? Sure, this is similar to the one we use here, the bamboo bridge. Oh yeah, it looks so impressive. Could you tell us a little bit more about this bridge? Of course. We are working towards engineered bamboo structures with predictable performance as an affordable, resilient and sustainable solution. This is particularly important for underprivileged communities around the world. And mind you, I'm talking about permanent structures made out of bamboo columns. Well, that is a wonderful and pressing cause to support. Most of us growing up in Hong Kong, including myself, usually think about bamboo being used for scaffoldings outside of buildings during construction. So how did you guys come up with the idea to use it for bridging structures instead? Exactly. Bamboo has been used for centuries in places where it is indigenous. It is renewable, cost-effective, and really strong, mm. but also comes with challenges. So these bamboo structures must be exposed to all kinds of environmental conditions. How do you ensure its strength in the long term? So if left exposed to environmental conditions, particularly UV radiation and water, bamboo's durability is drastically reduced. Oh, wow. An effective solution is just not to leave it exposed by using, for example, large roofs or foundations so that bamboo is not in contact with the ground. There are now efficient treatments against insects and termites, a whole combination of which ensures a durability of several decades, even 50 or more years. So will these structures be built by a team of specialists in these underprivileged communities? Yes, the idea is to use simple components and techniques like steel bolts and uh, plates mm. so that people with minimal training can use um, common tools and step-by-step -step instructions and assemble the bridge. Think of it like an IKEA version of a bridge. I think that's a fantastic idea. It's great to see civil engineering being used to support the global community in need. Wow, these look so cool. Oh, do you guys happen to know what these are? Pasta, maybe? Actually, no, these are plastic. Well, we're here at the Water Technology Center, which is world-renowned sewage treatment technology. Hey, Woody. Hi, Selena. Welcome back to our lab. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about these pasta-shaped materials. Oh, uh, actually, this is the project we collaborate with uh, Drainage Service Department. We are using this uh, pasta. Mm. Actually, they are plastic with water treatment media. We are trying to test which one is performed well or with the same experimental condition. Uh, we will form the functional bacteria on the surface of uh, this pasta, then try to remove nitrogen pollutants. Eventually, it can protect our Hong Kong's coastal wastewater from harmful algae problems. Well, that's great news. It's awesome to see that civil engineering is being used to solve yeah. real environmental problems. So, I've previously taken this course before, which talks about the novel wastewater treatment technology called the SANI process. But I'll let the professor explain that to you. Yeah, SANI 
technology actually is a low cost, low carbon wastewater treatment technology invented by Professor Guang Hao Chen and his team. I joined his team 10 years ago as a student, now I'm teaching here. I actually use sulfate reducing bacteria, reduce sulfate in wastewater into sulfide. Then later the sulfide is oxidized back to sulfate during this integrated and cyclic process the pollutants was removed. So what are the benefits of this novel wastewater technology? If compared to the traditional process, Sunny technology can eliminate 70% of sewage production yeah. and save around half of energy and space. More importantly, is Sunny technology can loop the wastewater treatment and the seawater, fresh water, dual supply system together and also reduce the greenhouse gas emission. Is this innovative process currently being applied in Hong Kong and other coastal cities? Yes, Sunny Demo plant has already converted into real application in Sha Tian sewage treatment works. Mm -hmm. People may not know the new sewage treatment technology needs 20 years to launch into a real works. It needs a long-lasting synergistic collaborations among governments, industries and universities and many other parties. I didn't realize it takes such a long process. Well, do you have any other ongoing wastewater projects? Yes, we are collaborating with the uh, Environmental Protection Department. Yeah. We're trying to seek out uh, eco-economic solutions to purify the liquid stream of food waste in Hong Kong. Another very pressing issue that we have here. Well, keep up the good work, Woody. Yeah, we will. I'm sure some of you may be interested in stocks, profits, even investments. I'm for sure definitely interested in this kind of thing. Well, some of you may even know that fintech is an ever-growing industry, and I for one want to find a little bit more about financial engineering. Hey, ji -hung. Hi, Sanina. Well, you know, when most people think about fintech, they think it's mostly a business topic. Yes. So I was wondering if you could tell us more about the role engineering plays in this industry. Sure. Engineering plays a very important role in modern finance. Taking investment, for example, the challenge that we're facing today is how are we going to take advantage of a huge amount of data and massive computing power oh, yeah. to construct, test, implement, and deploy profitable trading strategies. Oh, I understand. So how could we achieve this? There are many kinds of investment instruments on the market, stocks, futures, options, with different kinds of payoff function and risk. The question is how are we going to make a combination of them oh, yeah. to achieve our investment objective? We need to build mathematical models to capture the properties of components on the different market and how they interact on the different combinations. Through solving these models, we can find the best combination of this raw material mm -hmm. and the real-time adjustment to achieve our investment goals. Wow, it sounds like it involves some really complex calculations. Yes, it is very complicated. The volume, velocity, and variety of modern finance data is beyond the comprehension of the smartest brain looking at a bunch of screens. Oh, wow. And in fact, it will also overwhelm spreadsheet analysis on a traditional desktop PC or workstation. It's a necessity to use cutting-edge equipment and most importantly, advanced algorithms mm -hmm. to perform big data analysis and machine learning. We train our students with hands-on ability from understanding the domain knowledge, handling big data, uh -huh. to model analysis and implementation. I can certainly foresee graduates having a very prosperous future in this industry, especially with Hong Kong being an international financial center. So are there any other applications for decision analytics? Yes, of course. Exploring and advancing modern technology for various practical applications is exactly what we do in decision analytics. I can give you a few more examples. Um, how can we make a dynamic pricing strategies for hotels and airlines? How can we operate and optimize a large logistic network mm. or a supply chain? How can we make the best recommendation for online shopping? These applications share the same kind of challenge and decision analytics method as the investment example we just discussed. Well, I think our chat has been certainly very profitable. Indeed. Oh, I'm actually feeling a little hot. Maybe I'm a bit tired. I wonder if anyone could help me. Hey, Selena, what's up? Hi, Professor So. I'm Hi. actually feeling a little hot. Um, oh. I wonder if you could help me with that. Sure. Why don't you turn around? Oh, yeah? Take a look at this. Well, you're green, 
So you okay? Oh, that's great. Well, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about what this is. Right, this is the RFSS, the Remote Fever Screening Systems. So it detects people or screen people who have fever in a remote way, far distance. How far could it detect people in a crowd, maybe? It's a very good question. Yeah. So most systems outside the market can only detect to about three to five meters, oh, okay. about here. Yeah. But we can double that, at least. To so, yes, you can go over there. Yeah, I'll give it a try. try. Well, that is about 12 meter. And I can still see you. Yeah, it's still the there. Face. Wow, that's, that's really far. Yes, indeed. So how would this technology distinguish between a human face and a non-human face? Like, say, maybe this bear? In fact, it's through a deep learning. So it doesn't actually only focus on the face. It detects the whole body. So it is for visual closure. Even if you're in a crowd, half of your body is occluded. Mm. It can still guess where your head is. So sometimes it does look like a baby at a distance, okay? Because it's trained using human images as a whole. It's different from a baby. So we can try. Yeah, have a look. Oh, from here. Yeah. It's okay. And yeah. the other thing you can detect is hot object, but because this hot object is not on a human face, yeah. so it doesn't rate the alarm. Oh, no wonder. So it will only detect when it's directly on top of the face. Yeah then it would detect red. And that saves a lot of alarms. So, Professor So, I heard that this technology is actually being used outside of USC campus. That's right, that's right. So, a year ago, we got a request and to urgently deploy the systems. And so, we used six days and we made 21 systems. Those systems, some of them are in the border control, port, major government facility. And nowadays, we actually have systems at school, museum, elderly center, public library, or even our own library. Wonderful. Well, I'm so thankful that you and your team have been working so hard to keep all of us safe. So I thank you on behalf of everybody. You're welcome. Oh, I just love seeing this blue bridge. It brings back some really funny memories of my friends and I jumping up and down here during O Camp. Oh, it really is so wonderful. Hey, do you see this? Come, have a look. That's a car, but it doesn't really look like a car. I think I have the answer. Come on, follow me. Wow. That's pretty neat. Whoa. Oh. 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 Wait, did this robot car just deliver you some food? What is it? Oh, it's an unmanned delivery vehicle developed by my uh, PhD supervisor, Professor Ming Liu. And it is called Hercules, and now it is in serve on HKUST campus. Hercules also served in mainland China during the COVID-19 outbreak. It helps to transport meals to the quarantine village and send materials to the hospitals. Wow, well, I hope when I come back, I can see Hercules ferrying students up and down this hill from Hall 9 to Seafront all the way up to campus sometime soon. Well, see you later. Uh, see you, see you. Bye. See you. Oh, let's go on our next stop on the tour. Come on. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm starving. And what we could do is have a look at the Pulse. This is a data-driven platform that looks at the pulse of the campus community, such as human crowds or facility availability. This was actually developed by Professor Huan Minxu and his research team. Now, I usually check the pulse just before having lunch or leaving campus because it gives me and other students and staff really smart recommendations through the combined power of IoT devices, big data, and AI. Well, I kind of feel like Yamcha, and it's usually my go-to anyway. Let's go have some lunch. Come on. So while studying at UST, I learned a couple of Cantonese words like cha siu bao, ha gao, siu mai. Learning all of these words made it really easy to order food here. Actually, after saying all those food words, I'm feeling pretty hungry. I'm going to meet Marshall here because he's going to give me some tips and tricks to try and help me eat more healthy. So let's go yum cha. Come on. Hello, hello. 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 Wonderful. Mijia. Hello. 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 I'm really hungry. Oh. I want to eat chang fan. Okay, no problem. Or then you can scan QR code order. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I missed you. Yeah, me too. Yes. <laughs> hey, 
Selena. Hey, Marshall. How are you? Ah, great. You look radiant. Well, thank you very much. Well, I've actually just ordered us some healthy food. Oh, yeah. I think you must have a very healthy lifestyle. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Okay. So after the lunch, I can show you some interesting food making project. Really? Oh, yeah. that sounds like a good idea. Yes. Wow, Marshall, this lab looks extraordinary. Of course, this is the experiential learning lab for our food technology. See, still they are doing project inside. Yeah. You may walk in and find out the secret behind the food processing. Oh, really? Maybe you can enjoy their food too. Sure, of course. Go well, inside. Let's please. go. Pretty cool. <gasps> Potato chips? No, but you can try. Abalone. That's correct. Mm. So what was the process of making this abalone? First, uh, we're infusing them under vacuum mm. and uh, using a rotatory uh, vessel mm. with the sauce. And then we're freeze drying them. Oh, very cool. Well, how did you come up with such a creative process? Because I've never had anything like this before. There wasn't a freeze dried seafood on the market, so it was something new. And uh, it is healthy and high in nutrients. Yeah, well, it tastes delicious and I can definitely taste how healthy it is. So I think you made a good product. Right, on to stop two of our food eating journey. Uh, I don't know what this is or what this is. This is our group's project and we call it the Sustainable Burger cool. because we make it from all plant ingredients. But what kind of ingredients are you using in this one? Okay, so for the base, we use soy and wheat protein isolate and some gluten. And also for the red color that you see right here, it's beetroot extract. Oh, cool. And for the fat flecks in here, we froze coconut and mango fat. Yeah. And this kind of combination comes together to look like a patty. And this is what it looks like when it's cooked. Very cool. Well, I think this is a fantastic idea. And I really think it is the future of food. What is this? That is a refractometer. Basically measures the sugar content of a liquid. And what about this? That's our beer. Beer? Yeah. Yep. You guys can craft beer in-house? Absolutely. Yep. Have a sip. Can I try? Absolutely. Sure. Thanks. Mmm. Refreshing. Tastes like pale ale? Yep, that's, that's what we're going for. We're going for, yeah. Cool. Well, what's the yep. process? How do you guys make this? Well, let's get you sanitized first. Oh, we're thanks. extra clean about right. our process. Okay. So what we're doing here is to create beer mm -hmm. using natural yeast harvested in HKUSD. These are actually fruits and flowers we've collected around the campus and we've isolated the colonies onto these agar plates yeah. and selected yeast colonies for beer brewing. That's so cool, you can actually see the yeast as well. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. After the, taking those yeast colonies, we've done some sample tests to do uh, HPLC, basically to figure out how much alcohol is in our beer. And after finding out which ones were the best, we've proceeded to do what we call a macro brew. This is about a gallon of beer. It's fermenting as we speak. And after 14 days, we should have some beer ready for you to taste, yeah. Uh, this is one of our samples. You know, I'm a big durian lover. I was wondering if you could possibly make a durian flavored beer. Yeah, uh, you know, that is definitely possible. We are able to isolate the exact yeast flavor that gives uh, the durian taste and we can then probably produce something, yeah. If this process is that easy, could I just like dig up some soil near my house and then make this at home? Possibly, possibly. Uh, but, you know, obviously here in the lab, we're very clear about the sanitizing everything and just making sure that we're measuring everything out. But you could at home. Anyone can brew at any time. It's, it's, it's a very cool process. Wow, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I managed to have the chance to try this. This is really exciting. Wow, I really had a lot of fun in there. Oh, Marshall, that's where you went. Ah, uh, you like it? Yeah, I had loads of fun in there. I really love your course. Okay, here in this lab, our students, they apply the theory into the practice. They try out new ideas and make crazy products and new food processing techniques. Very cool. Well, other than food science, are there any other areas that people could get into? Of course. Our interesting fields include biological, chemical, environmental, and energy engineering. That's fantastic. Well, I think students coming out of these programs will be well equipped sure. to improve the areas of our society in the future. Well, I had a great time trying all these new foods and drinks, and I do look forward to coming back and trying that durian-flavored beer that I was promised. You're welcome. So this is the Robotics Institute. I'm supposed to be looking for Timmy. Timmy, where are you? Timmy! <gasps> Timmy! <gasps> Wait, there's a button. Hi, <gasps> welcome to HKUST Robotics Institute. Follow me for a quick tour of the lab. Thanks, Timmy. I think we've made it to the right place. Yeah, we have. Come on, let's go inside. 
Whoa. Wow, it's like I'm really stepping into a real robotic world. Wow, well, this certainly looks complicated. What, yeah. what is this? It's our robot arm is for automatic manipulation and it's very smart. Is it possible that it could put my phone together maybe? Yeah, sure. Wow, what a clever little robot. Ethan, come, come. You didn't tell me that UST had a playground in here. Oh, this is not a playground. This is a professional flying testing field, not for fun. Come on, let me show you something. Well, that sounds exciting. All right, Ethan, what was it you were going to show me? It is a special drone, oh, okay. and all its mechanics, structure, and the algorithms are all designed and developed by HQSD researchers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it involves a complex system architecture named the Fast Planner, which installed a stereo camera and a DJI N3 flight controller on the drone for the onboard sensing. So I noticed that this drone was actually flying with no one controlling it, but somehow it avoided bumping into all of these obstacles. How was that possible? Yes, first we uh, set the target position for the drone through this user interface. And second, the drone will find a path in this unknown environment and finally fly to the target. During this whole flight, the drone will make its own decision. That's really cool. Well, I think automated transport will surely become prominent in the future. And I can definitely see this taking it up to the skies. Definitely. Common vehicles are commonly used nowadays. And in the future, we hope that unmanned vehicles could safely be applied to the public transportations carrying people and goods. That's fantastic. Well, I will surely be a happy customer. So I've arrived at the new makerspace belonging to the Division of Integrative Systems and Design. Here, students can create their prototypes for their team-based projects. Who knows? Maybe even some of them will become the next innovators like Elon Musk. Take a look for yourself. Hi, Selena. How are you? Hi, Ravi. I'm great, thanks. Welcome to ISD Works. Thank you very much. Well, I want to know, what are these guys doing? So these are all my year three students. Uh, this is the semester-long project, which is a multidisciplinary uh, project. And the whole idea is to learn by doing. And the theme for this semester is personal mobility devices. Wow, that's amazing. That sounds really cool. Oh, it's going now. Well, Ravi, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to go chase after him sure, and ask Selena. him more yeah, about it. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Hey, I finally caught up to you. What is this? Oh, this is Mokline. We envision a light pair of retractable roller skates that empower you through roads effortlessly, but still allow you to walk up and down stairs like a normal pair of shoes. Who knows, perhaps someday everyone's going to be riding one of these around the campus. That sounds like a really great idea. I definitely would want one of these for myself. That's great. So cool. Actually, I've seen one of those before. That's the Luma robot, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. It looks a bit different from the original one. So what new features have you guys added? Yeah, let me explain. Come. Ah. Thank you, Jack. Very impressive. OK, so uh, basically, we add a, a mini PC, a computer, mm -hmm. and the sensor, and also the auto charging mechanism. Just think about like this thing can replace the, a sharing bike. You don't need to find it. It will come to you and you can just hop up and then go to your destination, hop down and let it go. It will go to its own charging station and charge itself. I think that is so clever and I think it'll be a really big business venture in the future. Yeah, of course. Uh, like for now, we are fine tuning the program and also the design uh -huh. so that later we can have our own startup company and be entrepreneurs. Whoa, there's more? This place is so spacious. It seems like so many students can be working here on their many different projects. Hey, Ravi. I didn't realize HKUSD offered so many of its resources to its students. Oh, absolutely. In ISD, we have a number of uh, things that are available to students. We have 3D printers on that side. Okay. We have welders here. We have CNC machines. We have water jet cutters, a number of different things. The whole idea is so that they can do things for themselves, design, yeah. make it themselves and then uh, show their innovations. That's the whole idea of having this. Well, that's awesome. And you actually even have a sewing machine oh, in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We had one project which uh, related to garments, and as a result, they needed to use a sewing machine. So we don't really limit their creativity. You know, it's endless creativity, so to speak. And the whole idea is we, so we have the next generation innovators coming out of here. Wow. Nice! Well, this is our last stop on the tour of the best engineering spots in HKUST. Well, some of you may be wondering, why is there a design studio in the engineering school? Ah, oh, Louise is over there. She can probably answer our question. Come on. 
Hi, Louisa. This place is really uniquely designed in the engineering school, mm. and I actually know you're the mastermind behind designing this whole space. Mm. So what design concepts did you have in mind? So I started with a question. Can a new space uh, change the way we learn? Mm. So guided by this question, I did not intend to create an outstanding studio to wow people. Mm. Instead, I look into the essential functions of a new learning space. Yeah. So for example, you can see that uh, this open plan space allows flexible arrangement uh, that promotes uh, learning as an interactive activity. Also, breaking from sitting still to listen, these are high benches and also the high stools. Yeah. So these movable furniture um, can encourage students uh, to move around to explore. And in addition, these are wall-sized uh, drawing pad with yeah. the dot grid here because in the design process, uh, sketching, drawing, doodling are means of visual thinking that are very useful in generating new ideas. So we've all recently heard a lot more about design thinking, a newer term in engineering. Most of us know about the term design, so are these terms in any way the same? Design thinking is a partial spectrum of design. It's a mindset and the idea is to let engineers think differently, to think like designers. Uh, while design in engineering is sometimes used as a verb, for example, like um, I design a program or I design a sensor system. However, in design discipline, Design is an expert knowledge that contains design theories and also design methods. So in new engineering education, we need design more than a verb, but the solid design knowledge. So I'm curious, are you training up designers in the engineering school? And does that mean everyone can design? First of all, good design does not come in a flash. Mm. Given that everyone can be a designer only having proper design training. In the school, we are not training designers as such. Rather, we aim to develop a new generations of engineers, the design approach to solve problems in a new light for meaningful innovations. Ultimately, we all together build a beautiful world. Well, as an engineer myself, I think we can all agree that we want to solve problems in aesthetic ways. Yes. And that's it. We have just gone and visited the 10 best engineering spots in HKOSD. Well, I've had a great time coming back here and catching up with students and professors on their exciting research projects and even exploring their incredible facilities. Well, I hope all of you have learned something new today because I most certainly did and are keen to come back and pay HKUST a visit. Well, thanks for joining me and I'll see you all later. Bye.